Hello and thank you for joining me for another episode of Ramley Views right here on Mason's Music Library. Now today I'm very excited to be discussing one of my dad's favourite bands and that's The Police and their 1979 classic album release, Regretta de Blanc. I love this band so much, so without further ado, let's get straight into the review. <laughs> Blank was the second studio album by the power trio The Police, an influential British new wave and post-punk band made up by the legendary Stuart Copeland on drums, Andy Summers playing the guitar, and of course the one and only Gordon Sumner, or as he's more commonly referred to as, Sting on the bass and vocals. Something that, by the way, is very hard to do both at the same time. Now, The Police were a super unique band for the time, with their more complex approach to music writing at a time of real simplicity for British music scene, following the rise of punk music. Now, this complexity comes not only from their knowledge and their skills as musicians, but also from their wide range of musical influences that they drew from, most notably being reggae music, a genre of music that would become very entrenched in British society thanks to its importation by Jamaican British immigrants, as well as it gaining mainstream traction and popularity with artists such as Bob Marley and the Wailers. This kind of fusion of punk, punk rock kind of aggression, new wave apathy and reggae optimism made for a really remarkable sound that was truly unique and innovative for the time. For me, easily one of my favourite songs from this album has to be the opening song, A Message in a Bottle. Now this song is just one of those songs for me that gets everything right, from the performance of each band member to the pacing and structure of it. I especially love how the song opens up with some fierce drumming from Stuart Copeland, one of, in my opinion, the best drummers of his age, with his one-drop rhythm style that was popularised by the drummer Carlton Bennett, the drummer for Bob Marley and the Wailers, by the way. And this, made, this beat is made unique by the accentation of the third beat in the bar, or as you might might say the accentuation of the upbeat and at this time this was completely new for western drummers and just the way that Stuart implemented it into the context of a rock and roll song made for such an interesting and different approach to writing. <laughs> Message in a Bottle also had some really unique and amazing guitar riffs that were highlighted by Andy's use of his pedal effects, most, of, most notably his MRX Phase 90 that gives this tone a very flowing feel to it and a very interesting effect. And of course let's not forget about Sting shall we, as he brings so much to this song from his bass playing that I feel perfectly complements his song, highlighting all the right moments in the in the song and adding so much texture to the sound profile. But the bass aside, Sting's vocal performance on this song is remarkable. He wields such power with his voice and has such an enchanting tone, again influenced by singers of reggae music, but developed in his very own way and manner. Next up, I really wanted to quickly talk about the song It's Alright For You, that switches up quite a bit from, from the previous song, having a more stripped back punk rock style, feeling more reminiscent of bands like the Buzzcocks with its driving rhythm section and more traditional rock and roll guitar playing. A really great song that kind of shows a more pure police sound. Another really fantastic track here is Death Wish that has this really cool reserved opening that again has some very interesting drumming and drumming and guitar playing that keeps building up into this very hypnotic rhythm that continues to repeat over the course of the song only deviating from the groove to add little accents here and there. Now, you might say this is more of a filler track for this album because it features no vocals and even less structure and development, but I love this song all the same, just a really cool little track. So that, my friends, is Walking on the Moon, one of the most iconic songs from this band's discography and the second UK number one single the band ever obtained. Walking on the Moon is a song known for its profound style, again drawing massive influence from reggae music with Stuart's side-sticking and Summer's skank guitar method, otherwise known as the scar stroke or upstroke, that plays on the second and fourth bar of each song, giving this song such an iconic effect and making it perfect to dance along to. Now the lyrics on this song explore the weightlessness that one feels when in love and how it can feel like you're taking giant steps walking on the moon. But this song, as with most police songs, has a darker side to it, exploring the fear of losing this feeling of weightlessness, weightlessness or losing the love that gave you that feeling. And Sting is recognising this fear, but also encouraging himself to keep it up and keep strong and 
keep loving. So I think that's going to have to wrap it up for this week's short and snappy episode of Random Reviews. I really enjoyed writing this video because the police were a band that meant so much to me growing up and it's just my pleasure to share my thoughts with you about them today. Such a rock solid band and a band that are often in my opinion really unappreciated because they just had such a considerable impact to music and also just made so many fantastic hit songs. That being said, I do wonder what your favourite police song is so why don't you let me know in the comment section below. And before you head out, I have this week's recommended listening list. Just a few songs that make a nice accoutrement for this project. Starting off with 54, 46 was my number by Toots and the Martels. Totally from the heart by the Buzzcocks. And last up, I'm going to go sit, I'm going to say Everything She Does Is Magic by The Police. And that's going to have to do it for this week's episode of Random Reviews. If you enjoyed it and would like to see even more classic album reviews, then subscribe to Mason's Music Library. And also check us out on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter, all of which will be linked in the description box. I want to say thank you once again, and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank <laughs> you.